Hi guys, it's Tina. Uh, this is a slightly different video for those who have been following my channel for a while. This is actually going to be my first ever floss tube video. Um, I've been cross stitching since I was um, on and off since I was a teenager, um, and over the last year or so, I've actually found a lot of my old patterns again. Uh, when I was tidying up my knitting stash, I found them all buried under my knitting yarn, and I sort of started getting back into it over the, towards the end of last year. Uh, so I thought to try and keep myself accountable and actually get some progress on some of my patterns um, I would start up doing a set of floss tube videos to help let me um, help me see my progress and share it with others as well because I know that this community is um, a very uh, friendly place to be I've been watching floss tube videos for the last year or so as well and I do often have them on in the background uh, when I'm working from home this is my work desk just here and even when I'm stitching as well, I quite often have a floss tube or a stitch with me on in the background just so I don't feel quite so on my own um, when I'm doing a hobby that is essentially a very individual hobby. So I thought I'd share with you what I've been working on in the month of January. Uh, in the month of January, I've been working on two projects. Um, I have got several more on the go and I will probably show them to you as and when they come up as I work on them. Um, but in January, I have worked on two projects. Um, I peel, pulled out one that I had um, previously started last year uh, and this is a kit from Gecko Rouge who are a kit company here in the UK. Uh, this is one actually from an artist that has now um, been retired from Gecko Rouge. I believe that she's now um, producing her own charts on Etsy instead but she's um, retired her licensing agreement with Gecko Rouge. Uh, but this is by uh, Medusa Dollmaker. This is a picture called Fables. As you can see, it's just in um, shades of blue, so it's uh, monochromatic in shades of blue. Uh, so I'm doing this one on a 25 count, um, easy count um, fabric, and I'm doing it one over one full cross. Uh, I will insert a picture here of what this looked like at the beginning of the month. Yep, so at the beginning of this month when I had this, this only had 1,009 stitches completed, uh, which is 1.48% of this um, full design. Uh, yep, so as you see, I actually, probably not very easy to see in the um, where I started video because most of it was white and very, very pale blue on white fabric, which as, it, as much as it a pain it is to see on vid pictures and video, it was also quite a pain to stitch because obviously if you, it's very hard to tell where you stitch and where you haven't. Um, so I did try the Royal Rose method um, with this one, but I was struggling to see where I'd stitched and where I hadn't. Um, so I did actually switch this over um, to diagonal parking. So if you just bear with me while I get move my park threads out of the way. Um, so I have switched this over to a diagonal. As you can see, I've managed to get uh, quite a bit of this one done. There is now some uh, blues coming in and we've actually got some details from the picture uh, starting to appear as well. And obviously when I started, I was right up on this top edge here, um, which as you can see, is all very pale. It's basically white and off-white. Uh, there are 30 colors on this in this kit. And they're basically all shades of, from a very dark uh, navy blue through to a, through to a white. Uh, so that's my progress on that one. So in the month of January, I actually stitched uh, 1,723 stitches on here. So this is now up to 4% um, completion. So uh, this one is doing quite well. So that's that 1,023 stitches done in that one. I'm now working, as you see, on the diagonal. I do park my threads on here. And on this one, because it's so tricky to see the pale colours, I'm actually working my uh, parking um, row by row rather than block by block just so I can keep track of which stitches I've stitched and which ones I haven't. Uh, so that's that first one. And then the other pattern I've worked on in January is actually the uh, stitch along that's being run was run by um, Heaven and Earth Designs for this year. Unfortunately, you did need to sign up for this before the end of December, so unfortunately it's not un un currently available anymore. Uh, but there were 10 charts to choose from for the Heaven and Earth um, stitch law. You have to excuse the, the glare on here. 
as I am sitting in front of a window so you can see the reflections but I chose this picture here of the frog and the ladybird uh, this is a part of a crop from a chart called Forest Fairy by um, Ciro Marchetti um, the full chart is available on the Heaven and Earth website I believe but this is just a part of it cropped down especially for this stitch along uh, so this is Forest Fairy number three because there were three different uh, crops available from this picture so this is the one I'm working on so obviously this was a new start on the 1st of January and for January with this one I've managed to get in a total of 1757 stitches uh, so this is another one I'm doing on the diagonal uh, with this one I am actually doing my parking block by block mainly in some of the very heavy confetti areas I go row by row just to make it a little bit easier as you see I did actually receive my uh, needle minder the other day as well which matches this um, from heaven and earth designs but this is my start on here so as i said this is the 1757 stitches which is a few days behind where i wanted to be at the end of january but we're not too far behind so i should be able to catch it up when i next have some time off uh, so yeah this is actually a well, it's listed as a 28 count uh, Brittany fabric and I am doing one over one full cross on here um, but as this has been hand dyed although it's very hard to tell it's a very very pale green um, hand dyed fabric uh, and it's been hand dyed which means it's been washed so it has um, shrank slightly uh, so when you actually stitch on it it's stitching more like a 30 count so when I initially started this uh, thinking it was a 28 which technically it was um, I started it with two over one tenth stitch and about a thousand stitches in I realized it was getting way too bulky I couldn't um, stitch it um, very easily and um, there was one point where I was trying to get the needle through the fabric for about five minutes I actually punctured the skin on my finger and bent my needle trying to get it through the fabric so about um, just under a thousand stitches in I think I actually um, gave up on that uh, stitch um, this is quite a long piece of fabric so I just flipped my fabric round and restarted on the other end of it um, so that um, start is on the other bottom corner but it's currently covered up by my Q-snap so I'm not going to get it out right now so I have restarted with one over one um, the coverage is still fine I love um, one over one is actually my favourite um, way to stitch on either 28 or 25 uh, count so I restarted it one over one and it's going well um, I love the coverage um, it's not getting as bulky on the back, it, is, it gets a little bit bulky in some of the confetti areas like where this uh, small pale uh, part is here. Obviously that was a lot of um, starting and finishing threads after only one or two stitches so that is a little bit bulkier on the back um, there but I could still get my needle through quite easily and it, it works well for me. So that's that one, this will obviously be continuing all year so you'll see progress on this one in every single floss tube. Um, the um, rewards for the Sal are quite interesting if you finish at least four complete pages of the pattern and um, which we were getting three pages a month so if you complete at least four full pages of the pattern uh, you get the rest of the 10 Sal designs um, completely free at the end of the year if you do actually manage to complete the pattern in its entirety we also get the choice of two patterns I believe from the heaven and earth designs website as well uh, so I am aiming to finish it I'm aiming to get a couple of charts off my wish list um, if I do finish it they will probably be possibly Thomas Kincaid charts or one of them will be at least because they're not very often in the sales either so it'd be nice to get one of those at least for my pattern stash so that was my January stitching so in January I got a total of 3480 stitches completed uh, which is an average of just over 112 stitches a day uh, it's kind of um, an unofficial uh, challenge I've got with myself to see if I can keep my average stitches up over the 100 stitches a day mark if I can push it up over the 200 I'd be even happier but keeping it at 100 stitches a day was my initial uh, goal for that average uh, so I'll have to see if I can keep that up through the year as well so that's my January stitching uh, I also thought I'd just um, quickly share with you some of my plans for February so as obviously as well as stitching on my um, Heaven and Earth stitch along, uh, my fables will probably be coming out a few more times as well as I'm trying to establish a rotation with my other full coverages. 
uh, which I'm going to do on a percentage basis. So I want all of my works in progress to be 10% apart. So like the, I need to get Fables up to 10% completed. And then when I complete its 11th percent, I can then start my next chart up to its 1%. Although I think my next chart on the list is already over its 1% from its start. So it'll, that'll probably skip that step. And then obviously we'll do 12% on Fables, 2% on that one. And we'll carry on like that until I have them all in line. So when I've got, I'm hoping to get up to 10 whips, I think that will get me. So when I get right down to the end, when that rotation is set, I'll have one on 90, 91, 81, 71, 61, 51, 41, 31, 21, 11, and then 1% for the one I'm starting. And then obviously as I work through them, the one on 91% will finish. And then the next one will start in the same, in the next, um, go through that rotation. So hopefully that will allow me to show some, um, to keep my progress running on everything. Obviously it'll be a little bit more boring at the beginning whilst I'm setting it up because I have got to push charts up to higher numbers to begin with. Like my Fables has got to get up to 11 or 12% until my next one, before my next um, whip will kick into that list. But I have got it all uh, written down on a um, spreadsheet so I can keep track of where I'm going with that one. So that's the setup for what I'm trying to set up for my rotation. Uh, the only other thing I have planned for February is I'm starting the 2024 to 2029 leap year cell, uh, which is a obviously a four year long cell running uh, from this year through to 2029 when our next leap year is. Yes, I think it's 29. Yes, it will be 2029 in the next leap year. And it's you obviously pick a pattern to work on for those four years. Uh, this is being run mainly on Facebook. I believe there is a hashtag for it, which I will put on the screen and in the description box. Um, and obviously we're all joining it on Facebook. Some people did start at the beginning of January for this um, sale to make it like a, a new year, new start. The original idea was for us to start on leap year day on the 29th of February, um, but they did relax that rule because some people wanted to do a new year, new start and work for the entire year. I kept my plan to originally to start on the 28th, 29th of February. Uh, my plan for this sale is actually to work on this pattern. Um, after my sale stitches are up to date, or I have worked on my sale for a little bit that day, um, from the 28th of the month through to the end of the month, so most months it'll be three or four days worth of stitching, I'm gonna work on this project and see how far I can get in the four years. So this will be a brand new start in February on the 28th when I start it. And for this style, I chose a, a nice challenging design. It's one I've wanted to do for a while. I actually purchased this pattern with some birthday money a year or so back, and I've been slowly collecting my um, uh, threads and other materials um, since then, because it is a slightly more expensive pattern to kit up. And this pattern is a Chatelaine. So this is the, can't see it. Yeah. This is Butterfly Lace Mandala by Chatelaine. So this is the one I have chosen for the leap year cell. Uh, this will be stitched on an even weave. I think it's a 28 count if I remember correctly. I've not actually dug it out of my fabric stash. I have bought it. Um, I can't remember if I bought white or antique white, but it's one of the two. Now I believe it's a 28 count even weave, but I will correct that in February once I show it to you once I um, started it. So that's the pattern picture. And as I said, I've been slowly gathering all my um, specialty flosses. I'm not going to get these out of the bag so you will have to excuse any glare but these are all my um, specialty uh, silks and flosses and the metallics. Uh, I'm going to leave the beading till the end so I'm not going to start collecting beads until I'm a bit further on with the stitching. But that's all my specialty flosses so I am looking forward to uh, working with a lot of these. I've never actually worked with the um, silks before uh, so that'll be a first. I have worked with a tiny little bit of um, treasure braids but not very much. But there are, I've got um, Water Lilies and Gloriana and Dinky Dyes in here, I think. I think there's one other brand as well, but I can't see a label at the moment, so I can't remember what it is. But that's all my specialty flosses that I've been gathering up for that one. So that will be started at the end of the month. Uh, that one will be going on my uh, scroll frame, which I'm going to have to dig out. I believe it's in that corner over there somewhere. Uh, I can't even remember if there's actually another project on that I might have to take off it. Um, so rather than keeping that one in and out of Q snaps all the time, I'm going to put that on my scroll frame and leave it there because I don't tend to use my scroll frame quite as often because I do actually stitch 
sitting at this desk and I tend to prop my Q-snaps um, up on my lap against the table edge. So I will have the Q-snap sitting on my lap, which you obviously can't see from here, and then I have it resting on the table and I find that I can actually stitch um, around it by putting my arm around the Q-snap and I stitch two-handed with it leaning on the table and on my arm. Uh, that works for me quite happily. I'm sitting up reasonably straight so I don't get a stiff back or anything when I'm doing it. And I'm sitting on a chair that's a good height for me. I, I am uh, saving up to buy myself a Lowry stand, but I think that's probably going to take a few months. Uh, so if that, if and when that comes in, I will show it to you. Uh, so the only other thing I want to share with you is uh, what came into my stash this month. Uh, so I did buy some... <laughs> Uh, floss this month but I have already put it all away so I can't actually show you but it was basically just the remaining colours I needed for uh, my heaven and earth sale so it was I think there was eight or nine colours that I didn't have in stash already for my DMC so it was just a multitude of greens and a couple of reds and yellows for the ladybird and the flower so they all came in uh, if I do another floss order I will try and remember to take some pictures of it before I put it all away so I can show you in the next one if I do end up with a floss order coming in in February but if I don't need anything I'm planning to try not to buy anything if I can get there the only other thing I did purchase in January was a new chart just bear with me I grab my tablet uh, so I did purchase a chart in the heaven and earth design sale uh, this one I'm planning to run as a, it's for a Christmas in July start, is what I've planned for it. I'll just find the picture. So this is artwork by Donna Gelsinger. It's um, obviously charted by Heaven and Earth. And uh, this is uh, Merry and Bright, which I'm not, so they also picked the Max Colour version. So this is Mary and Bright by Donna Gelsinger in Max Colours. Uh, I'm planning to start this in July, for Christmas in July. Uh, I'm probably going to uh, run a very relaxed stitch along with it. So if you want to join in with a Christmas project, it doesn't have to be this one. If you have a Christmas project that you want to join in with, uh, whether it be a new start or uh, something you've already started and you want to continue working on, uh, I'm going to be running a, well, a stitch along uh, for that a very relaxed one uh, my plans uh, currently because uh, it's going to be a, like a set your own goals uh, one I just want to um, keep it going because being max colour and quite a large design is going to take me a while to um, work through it so I want to keep that progress moving as well uh, so my plans at the moment for that stitch along are to start it in July and I'm going to try and work on that pan every single month so in July October January and April which is four times a year I'm going to try and do 3,000 stitches on it in those months and then in the months in between I'm going to try and get uh, just 1,000 stitches on that every month which means in a full year I should do 20,000 stitches on that chart. Now if memory serves me correctly that chart's 140 something thousand stitches so even at 20,000 stitches a month it's going to 20,000 stitches a year it's going to take me a long time to finish that's um that project but hopefully at least I can see some um, progress and if maybe next year once the heaven and earth cell is complete I might be able to have some more space in my rotation to um, increase some of those numbers and possibly make it slightly uh, more of a challenge to myself but we'll play that by ear as I get there I'm going to start with the 3,000 and 1,000 stitches uh, which I think will be a challenge because I've only done just over 3,000 stitches in total this month uh, so to put 3,000 on that Christmas project and do my stitch along and everything else as well I think in July will be my first challenge. Some of those 3,000 stitches for July might end up being pushed into August or even September um, but I am hoping to try and reach those goals as I go. So that's everything for this first Gloss Tube video. Uh, do remember to comment down below if you're also a stitcher. Um, it would be nice to have these videos do well. I do love the Floss Tube uh, community and I'm excited to be a part of it. So I'm planning on doing these videos every month so that you can see my monthly progress. Um, if I can work out how to do a stitch with me with my setup, I might try and do a video of um, a stitch with me video at some point. 
I currently film on my iPhone on a very small um, like standard um, video tripod, um, picture tripod, which is only about the height of my tablet. So it hasn't got a lot of flexibility and if you try and tilt the camera forward, the weight of the phone tends to not, uh, tends to um, overbalance it and the whole thing falls over. So I might have to try and work out a different way of setting up for that. So that might take some practice or I might have to dig out my old digital camera and try and find a proper tripod and see if I can work with that instead. Um, but in the meantime, these will be monthly um, videos so you can keep an eye on my progress. So um, do follow along if you want to see my progress. Comment down below if you've ever stitched a kit from um, Gecko Rouge or if you're doing a Heaven Earth design full coverage. Um, I do love um, following other people's uh, projects and seeing how everyone stitches differently and just following along. Uh, so that's it for this month guys. I will see you at the end of February with all my new progress and my new start for the Leap Year South. So I will see you later. Bye!